If you grew up in Britain in the early 2000s and 2010s, a unanimous experience of our childhoods was CBBC. If your family were too poor to have Sky, with the Disney Channel and every single children's TV network known to man, you were stuck with CBBC and CITV. Over the years, the BBC have had an incredible track record of providing amazing children's television that is not only entertaining, but also questionable and terrifying at times. This is how the British Broadcasting Corporation moulded Gen Z and Millennials. As much as I could talk about every single iconic show on CBBC, in this video I want to talk about how many hallucinogens the creators of these shows had to be on. To not only conceive and pitch these ideas to the BBC, but to execute and deliver them to children's brains across Britain. The first show I want to talk about quite possibly had the biggest cultural impact on our childhoods. Richard Dick McCall and Dominic Wood met while presenting The Broom Cupboard and were invited to create a new Saturday morning show to air on CBBC's new digital channel. They created a concept for a show titled Dick and Dom in the Bungalow. The name in the Bungalow was suggested by the BBC as a parody of Sasha Baron Cohen's Ali G in the House. Much of the programme revolved around a loose game show format involving six studio contestants, aka bungalow heads. The majority of the time, these were children. However, in season 5, five children and one celebrity were the contestants on the Saturday show, and five children and one special guest were contestants on the Sunday show. Points were earned through success in various games throughout the show, although points could be awarded or taken away at any point in time. The first and second prizes were usually desirable items, such as TVs or game consoles, but the third prize was always a booby prize. Some examples of the booby prizes include a hubcap, a cake made of carpet, hairy cheese, bottled water from the river hole, or a chocolate teapot. At the very end, the bungalow head with the fewest points was gunge while sitting on the toilet. Though for the last series, this practice was largely dropped because the contestants were already covered in creamy muck muck. Yes, this was a children's show with endless sexual innuendos. On reflection as an adult now, I've realised the copious amounts of cocaine they had to be on to produce a show as glorious as this. Dick and Dom were incredibly energetic and were perhaps best known for their pre-recorded segments on the show. The most famous being the bogeys game. In this game, Dick and Dom situated themselves in quiet public spaces, such as a museum or a restaurant, and took turns shouting bogeys at gradually increasing volumes, until one of them didn't shout as loud as the other, which was judged by a meter on the screen or until the other one quit due to embarrassment. The bogeys game became a phenomenon, and is still a huge part of British culture. As an adult now, I still have to resist the temptation to shout bogeys at the top of my lungs. Now. The serious business in hand. Bogies! That was a brave bogey. It's a 4.2. And the crowd getting to their feet, delighted with the audacity of Wood's tactics there. And it seems McCourt has lost his bottle. Yes, he concedes and hands the match to Wood. In between cartoons being shown, other iconic segments would be sprinkled in, such as Diddy, Dick and Dom, in which miniature versions of Dick and Dom presented a mini sketch during an intermission of the show. The sketches tended to be slapstick and toilet humour, which arguably made the entire show. Another segment that was deeply loved was the phone-ins from the viewers, creating one of the most iconic moments in the show's history, Nanny Knob Knobs. Charlie! What? It's Dom from Dick and Dom in the Wonder Zone! I don't know, I don't know what they're saying! Hello? That's right! Hey, Nanny! Hello, right clear! Charlie! Charlie! I don't know what they're saying! Hello? Hello? Oh. 
In August 2004, the BBC upheld a complaint against Wood and McCourt, appearing nearly naked in promotions for the show on the CBBC channel, deeming the material as beyond acceptable standards. A month after that complaint in September, Ofcom the regulator said that the show breached children's programming regulations when Don wore a t-shirt wording Morning Wood, a slang term for erections. He said it was merely a reference to the morning time slot and his surname, which adds to their incredible legacy if you ask me. The BBC said that its producers made an error in not objecting to the shirt. Peter Luff, a Conservative MP, attacked the programme and its websites for scatological content and criticised the role of the BBC as a public broadcaster of such content. The BBC responded that the show was entertainment for children 8 to 12 years old and was well liked by that demographic, but may not appeal to adults. No shit, an old geezer isn't going to enjoy two grown men shouting creamy muck muck at 9 in the morning. Dick and Don was Gen Z humour personified, and were ahead of their time. On the 4th of May 2022, it was announced that Dick and Dom in the bungalow would be returning as a tour in autumn 2022 to mark the show's 20th anniversary. The next show I want to talk about is a ketamine trip. Stupid was essentially a comedy sketch show hosted by King Stupid and his annoying purple gremlin butler, Goober, who he constantly refers to as a bog house rat. Goober was normally given a variety of boring tasks by Stupid, such as going to the supermarket and taking out the rubbish. The love-hate relationship between the King and Goober provided a sitcom-style element to the show, with a self-resolving story arc throughout each episode. In between Stupid and Goober arguing was the sketches themselves, which believe it or not, were incredibly stupid. Some of the sketches became infamous amongst youth, most notably Devil Finger. There wasn't a playground in the UK that could escape the wave of Devil Fingers and Bendy Wendy's being thrown about. If you're confused about what this was, watch this. Devil Finger, curse you Devil Finger. Because of you, I shall remain ever alone. From hell's dark heart, I stab at you Devil Finger. Die! Die! Bendy Wendy! I can't control my finger. Every time I see an outstretched finger, I have to... Bendy Wendy! Be Bendy Wendy? Bendy Wendy? Ten finger. Oh, Bendy Wendy. Ten finger. Bendy Wendy. Now, if you still don't know what that was, then welcome to the club. Thankfully, the show only lasted two seasons and 20 episodes. I was never a huge fan of this show, mainly because of the relentless bombardment of kids trying to stick devil fingers in my face. The show was absolute horse tranquilizer. Perhaps one of the most underrated shows was The Slammer. The Slammer was set in a fictional prison called HM Slammer. The show followed a variety show format where prisoners who had been arrested for showbiz related crimes compete by performing to an audience of children who then decide which act should be released. The show was produced by Steve Ride, who also produced Dick and Dom in the Bungalow, so you knew it had to be another conception from copious amounts of cocaine. The show was based on an item from Dick and Dom called The Strangely Talented a game in which contestants perform their specialised acts in front of the bungalow heads to try and win the title of Strangely Talented Champion. Some of the supporting cast from Dick and Dom and the Bungalow appeared in the Slammer, including puppeteer David Chapman and prison officer Ian Kirkby. The prison was run by the governor, played by Ted Robbins. The governor always wears a white suit with a golden bow tie, like Liberace, and fulfills his duties by hosting the Freedom Show and occasionally quizzing audience members about their views on the performing prisoners. Four acts performed each episode, and the act who gets the most support through applause and cheering, measured by a clapometer, is released. The show ran for six seasons and 76 episodes, with the last episode airing on the 26th of July 2014, due to what I'm assuming was an overdose in the writer's room. This next show is an A1 sheet of acid if I've ever seen one. 
Trapped was a show set in a dark, six-floor, gothic fairy tale tower, which, from the opening titles, is situated on a small island in the middle of the sea. Every episode was introduced by the caretaker, who looks like a shaved ballsack. He's a former world traveller, who, according to the story, only came there for one good night's sleep, but was imprisoned there by the voice. The voice is basically some witch's mouth with some dutty teeth. To earn his freedom, the caretaker must trap as many children as the voice deems worthy. What this woman was going to do with the children, we don't know. But this was the BBC, so you never know. Although saying that, this does remind me a lot of someone else who had a private island. Maybe this show wasn't thought up on drugs, and it's actually a documentary. Six children compete in each episode, and are brought to the tower by another captive, Wily Sneak. The children begin at the top floor of the tower, and must journey their way to the bottom. One child is eliminated, or trapped, on each floor, and the last one remaining receives the key of freedom and escapes. Sequestered in the attic, the caretaker offers narration and instructions while viewing the events through the watch tank. A large globe mounted within a frame that gives a 360 overhead view of the relevant portion of the tower. The show ran for 4 seasons and 52 episodes, and as weird as this show was, it was incredibly compelling television, with all the mini games and educational lessons about child trafficking. On the 26th of May 2022, the BBC announced plans for CBBC and BBC4 to be discontinued as broadcast television services within the next few years as part of cutbacks and other changes focusing on creating a digital-first BBC. As had been done before with BBC Three, CBBC's output will move primarily to iPlayer in an attempt to save the BBC money. With all jokes aside, CBBC, for the most part, genuinely provided great entertainment that was ahead of its time a lot of the time, both in terms of humour style and wacky concepts that will go on to shape millennials and Gen Z into what they are today. Thank you so much for watching this video and your incredible support recently, it really does mean a lot to me. Make sure to follow me on all my socials, at Fat like, subscribe, and comment below what you want to see next.